Yeah, we can go ahead. You, you can use this one. You have a clip on you. I'll get a clip on mine. I prefer the clip on. Is this the one that draws down the Yeah, this is down. Now the white board is old fashioned, but you remember better. Can be close ranks easier. All should have this document in your hand. Come and look at this side. So, this is a relatively new topic as far as the mental thing goes. Because the <coughs> effect of the digital screen, no matter what the program is, materially, what's not In Sri Lanka, this lecture is done in schools and the first school to get this done was that the greatest school in the whole world, we think. <laughs> That's the school I went to and Pastor Lucky went to and some of us here have gone to. I mean, there might be valid disagreements. Uh, so our college had this lecture for uh, primary school staff, uh, all school staff, then for call B students, that is those who have just gone through the uh, year 11 public school examination, which is called GCE, and also for the annual general meeting for about 400 parents. But since then, all Columbus schools, St. Joseph, St. Peter's, St. Bridget's, uh, ladies and international schools have had this program on. Also, I speak to corporates because uh, I found that uh, parents who don't come when the school invites will come when the chairman invites. I, I suppose it's like that here also, isn't it? Uh, and then police have taken this on board as part of their training. So senior police officers as juniors come to our church auditorium. Then I have done this lecture for doctors as part of clinical society and for medical students as part of their curriculum, but it's a new lecture. Now, this is the topic, uh, right learning and digital health, curriculum, career, character choices. Why is that topic named like that? Because the digital effect affects the curricular uh, potential of the child, affect, it will affect their career and their character and how they make choices. Uh, we can move the slide, George. If you look at, can you get familiar with this dock? We call this the primary dock. Then there is a dock that will not be used. You can take it home for further reading. That's the eight page dock, you can put it away. Then you'll have a document with the brain that we will refer to soon. This dock is just a awareness creator. You can keep it to read for yourself and give it to a friend. And there's a doc that you will fill up somewhere during this lecture, okay? So we are on course now. Shall we read the printed word? Now the printed white and black printing, reading of it gives best memory. And if you 
keep writing in two languages, four A4 docs, four A4 pages, in two languages, if you keep writing, you don't get Alzheimer. <laughs> that is medical research, which means writing is so important. That's God's gift to mankind, isn't it? Writing. Now, you may be aware that Americans have done away with cursives. You know, cursives are flowing hand. Americans have done away with cursives because children are so much on the screen and they can't get the flowing hand. Now, when the fingers get to doing the flowing hand, our brain becomes brilliant because this activity of fingers rounding up letters is the most brain track developing synapse making activity the brain knows. I repeat it, when you do your flowing hand properly, that is the activity that makes brain brilliant most. New synapses and brain plasticity, that is brain's renewability is renewed, more you do your handwriting. Now this is scientific fact. So now I have to tell you scientific fact because the millennials think that parents have come out of the Jurassic Park. <laughs> that only dinosaurs are thinking of handwriting. Now, this is not scientifically true. So I repeat, if you do handwriting in two languages, filling four A4 pages, you'll probably delay Alzheimer out of your lifetime. Similarly, if you keep your attention span for 40 to 45 minutes lifelong, which means you plan every 45 minutes to stick at one thing for that 45 minute period of time. So we tell students, do one thing for 45 minutes and take a five minute break for your Facebook, which is the old people's book, Instagram, Wine, Chat, Vimo. What else is there, Abigail? Um, Snapchat. Snapchat, of course. Uh, this is the, the, the millennial generation thing. So do your uh, schoolwork or whatever for 40 to 45 minutes uninterrupted. Then do some extracurricular distractions. But soon as possible, you get back to what you have to do for 45 minutes. If you do that, also you don't get Alzheimer. Got the two points? Handwriting in two languages, lifelong. Fill up four A4 sheets and then keep your attention span, plan your day. So you teach your children also when they come after school at three or four, keep your 45 minute attention span. So every hour, your child knows what the child should be doing. For 45 minutes nonstop, then you have a bit of 15 minutes. I'll tell you the scientific background of that as we go on. So in our printed doc we have, Right learning and digital health, curriculum, career, character choices, responding to inattention, impulsivity, hyperactivity. Did you see that? I think the Melbourne weather has hit my laser pointer. It's not working. It did perfectly well in Sri Lanka, so it has to be the Melbourne weather. It, did you see inattention, impulsivity, hyperactivity? Now, those who are familiar with ADHD, heard the word ADHD? Attention Deficit Hyperactive Disorder. This, uh, thank you. Yeah, is the marker. marker. Yeah. yeah. Inattention, impulsivity, hyperactivity. Those are the three cardinal symptoms of ADHD. Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. Uh, ADHD has many possible causes and medical science is still unraveling. But the thing about ADHD is that when the child, the child born, so when, I, when children come with parents to my clinic, Empathic Learning Center, I ask them, is this child jittery from the first year or later? So if it's a child with ADHD, even in the first six months, the mother will say, uh, feeding was difficult, putting to sleep was difficult. So in an ADHD child, we really don't know what has affected the child, but the brain tract formation in, 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 the, in the uterus itself, has, has something has happened. And from our research, we can find, and other research, 
if the mother went through trouble and if a mother had a hectic digital life, now this is not known till about two years ago, and uh, children born during the time when agrochemicals are high in the atmosphere, all these have been pointers to ADHD. I'm not talking about autism. About autism, I only know what medical textbooks know. But about ADHD and the dig digitalizing effect of the screen on the child's uh, brain, learning and youth behavior, maybe we have got to know quite a lot because of the research. So those are the parameters of what we are going to talk today. Inattention, impulsivity, hyperactivity are the three main symptoms of overexposure to the digital screen. Can I get a wave on that? So the children will look as if they have ADHD. So if you take them to a usual practitioner, they will put the child on methylphenidate, that is Ritalin, or one of the drugs usually given to ADHD. So one major thrust of my research is to prevent practitioners prescribing drugs to children who already have a chemical imbalance in their brain because of the overexposure to the digital screen. Did you understand that? So any doctors here? Yeah. So it's part of, uh, the, part of the, the, the research drive, at, at least part of my responsibility I feel to the medical profession is to exclude the digital screen first before you prescribe methylphenidate for these three symptoms of inattention, hyperactivity and impulsivity. Inattention anyone can understand. At the age of three, a child should have an attention span of about 10 to 15 minutes. What does a child do at the age of three? What do you encourage the child to do? The child wakes up, the doll wakes up, and the doll has to go to school. So the doll has a breakfast and goes to school. What is the doll's school? Your daughter should always have a table by the age of three, little table, there's a chair on this side, chair on that side, and, dot, uh, and the doll goes to school. And in that school, who's the teacher? Daughter is the teacher. So the daughter teaches the child whatever the child, he knows, she knows, she teaches the doll, and school is over in about 10 to 15 minutes because that's her attention span. Then the doll comes home and daughter comes home and, uh, and you give milk and you give lunch and, uh, and do, 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 doll goes to sleep. So that's how you develop the attention span of a three-year-old child. All of brain brilliance depends on the attention span and focus you developed in the first three years. Nobody is born brilliant, you are trained brilliant. Can I get a copy each of my books? Amma. Nobody is born brilliant, you are trained brilliant. Books, there are other books. No, other books. Now, you are born with an IQ potential, but unless you develop it, your brilliance will not come out. So all that brain track brilliance of the first five years is very important. And I'll tell you how it comes up. Now, for some of us, uh, it, it might be a little, little late in the sense we will not have children again, but we can always help with our grandchildren. And looking at some of you, maybe you are ready to have great-grandchildren. <laughs> so, so it's useful information all the time. So I have called it recovering childhood, relearn, retrain, remanage, developing empathic rem remedial procedures. Maybe we will look at the slides now. Let's, uh, I can move the slides, isn't it? Uh, so the whole lecture is very long and uh, a lot of technical details are involved. So today we will not go that technical, thank you. So this is that book of mine, Parenting Heart and Brain in an Age of Digital Domination, Train, Brilliant. We'll tell your neighbor, train, brilliant. Yeah, that's the way to go. There's a... Next. Uh, this is the long contents of this lecture. We'll have the effect on the generation, digital stimulant effect, dopamine serotonin curves, top-down versus bottom-up regulation, curricular potential versus seven brain tracks, pixel-driven neurotoxicity, attention span and early remedies. Pixels are those little honeycomb-like things that appears on the LED screen. So your home television is LED, your smartphone, iTab, 
I iPad tab is LED, whereas your laptop and your desktop has an LCD in front of the LED. So if you want to do long work, always use the laptop and the desktop. Don't do long work on the iPad, tab and smartphone. It will have an effect on your brain. Did you understand that? So even with schools that drive children towards digital learning, you need to lobby with the school. Don't fight with the school, but lobby with the school. That it is better for the child to do the laptop or the desktop than the iPad or tab. Okay? That is scientific fact. Because the laptop and the desktop are backlit driven. Photons don't directly enter the retina. Yes. This will also have how to manage your food in a way the child's brain becomes brilliant. Digital effect on learning, medical effects are digital stimuli, digital effects on sleep. Power of right use of music. Very quickly about music. Uh, brain is not into multitasking. Multitasking is a myth. Brain best handles one thing at a time. When you are multitasking, something is compromised for the other. So this is as far as music goes. If music gets you to be kinesthetic, which means rhythm driven, music doesn't act like a language. Let me backtrack a little. Classical music where lyrics wrap around the notes and the notes wrap around the music, uh, the lyrics, act like a language on the temporal lobe. So if you are singing Amazing Grace, where John Newton created it, it works like language on your brain, which is good. Okay? But if you want to do Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me, you lose the language effect of the hymn, you may still have the inspirational effect depending on whether you are millennial, Y gen, I gen, X gen, or before that. It depends. But music acts as a language when every note of music hugs the lyrics and the lyrics hug the musical notations, which is classical music. Are you listening? We have many children now, many students now, have their earphones plugged. And they say, we study better when we have music in the ear. Actually, what they are doing is they sit with the book longer when they have music in their ear. That doesn't mean they are learning better. That's scientific fact. Any music that drives you to keep the kinesthesia, the rhythm, will work against language. That is scientific fact. You will learn it when we come to the seven tracks of the brain. Empathic, intuitive, empathic, relational, linguistic, managerial, kinesthetic, acoustic, visual. It doesn't need, it's not rocket science for you to understand. One track overdriven will subjugate the other tracks or inhibit the other tracks. So if the music is causing the child to have an inside dance and is wiring up the kinesthesia in the brain, you will not remember the study material. Did you understand that? Yeah. You can Google the Mozart effect of music on studies. M -O -Z, that's all Mozart. I hope I got his pronunciation right. M-O-Z-A-R-T. Yeah. A-R-T, yeah. Uh, so here is a very quick purview in the word of God about a generation that was going to come up. This generation, there is a generation that curses their father and does not bless their mother. So their fracture is greater with the father, less with the mother. Understood? This is the latter part of the book of Proverbs. So you can see that the word of God has wisdom for all seasons. There is a generation that are pure in their own eyes and yet is not washed from their own filth. That is to say, they don't think anything else, anything is not for consumption, all is up for grabs and all is up for consumption. So it's a consumerist generation. They will test the fence, test the limits and so on. So 
I, I'm not being critical, I'm just, just telling you what the scriptures say about a generation that will be coming up. There is a generation, oh, how lofty are their eyes, and their eyelids are lifted up, so they always want more. There is a generation whose teeth are like so, then their jaw teeth like knives, that means they become very rude with their words. I may suggest to you that this is the effect of the digital screen, particularly the cartoons they see. You will soon see with my next graphics that this has a scientific or a neurochemical, neuronal basis why children become like this. Yes, next. Uh, to devour the poor from off the earth and the needy from among men, the leech has two daughters who are always saying, we need more, we need more. Uh, we can get on to the next slide, George. Digital stimulant has five components. Time length of exposure to the LED screen. More than 25 minutes, if you are on the LED screen, the neurochemistry and the neuronal firing will take longer to return to learning mode. LED screen itself puts your neurons on what is called a non-preferred multi-directional firing. Whereas our neurons are created and designed, depending on my audience, I will say designed if it's a secular audience, I will say created if it's a Christian audience, because most of my time I am speaking to completely secular audiences, so I use the word design. So your neurons are designed that they will respond to one stimulus one at a time. So when the child is on the digital screen for more than 25 minutes, neurons lose their homeostasis, that is the normal physiological state, and they move to a thing called allostasis, which is stressed up behavior. So I gave you the technical term allostasis. What does allostasis mean? Stressed up behavior. Neuronal, neurons begin to fire in many directions. So more than 25 minutes on the digital screen, neurons try to fire in many directions. Now this is true for all of the digital screen. It becomes worse depending on how many pixels a digital screen uses for a program. For instance, old Huckleberry Finn and Mickey Mouse, you know, you remember old cartoons? They must have used about a thousand pixels for a second. The new fast cartoons and digital games must be using about 100,000 pixels for a second. Did you understand the difference? The change of pixel rate is very high in modern cartoons and digital games. That is what has an effect on the neurochemistry and the neurons. The most potent stimulation of the brain is the pixel screen. Uh, now researchers have found the pixel screen acts like cocaine on the, on the brain. That's why it is called electronic cocaine. So Harvard in the academic articles will call this electronic cocaine. You can Google it. If you Google electric, electronic cocaine, you will come across it. I will explain pharmacologically exactly what it is. Now, by the way, my last academic post was head of department of pharmacology in the medical faculty. So in a sense, this research is related to my last academic post. I'm not a pediatrician. I'm not trained in pediatric medicine. I was trained in adult medicine. But because the children were getting jittery and there was a neuropharmacological effect on the brain, it came under the kind of research I was used to doing. My earlier research was on epilepsy, Parkinsonism, migraine, uh, serotonin-based diseases. So some of my research is still on Medline. My normal name is my... my name now known as Lalit Mendes, but my research appears under BLJ Mendes. That bit I told you because some of what I am telling you, you will not found on, find in the internet because there is groundbreaking research. So you need to know from ba what background I am telling you this to get you to understand that I am not talking off my hat. This is well-founded research. It is also up on the website of the Ceylon College of General Practitioners. If you are a medical person, 
this document is also for you. You can have one. This is a refereed medical article. You can have it before you go. Yeah. Uh, so that my popular lecture is based on proper academic data. All right. We will go like this for another 35 minutes. Then we have time to fill up a form which is in your hand. And then you have to write down a question even now. You can write down the question on the paper that is provided, which you are supposed to hand back over to me. There's a paper like this. Please write down your question. Your question really helps in further research thought. OK. So what must you do? Plead with your son and daughter to please, at the end of 25 minutes, Please stop the screen. Now, some children have to study off the iPad or the tab because the school required to do so. Still at the end of 25 minutes, get them to stop it and munch some nuts. Nuts. Now, munching chewing gum is a horrible social habit, but it can somewhat diffuse the effect of the screen on the brain. I still don't recommend chew chewing gum. Uh, principle is that when you move your small muscles intentionally, like biting chewing gum or biting nut or biting carrot, and move your fingers on a tweezer, you know, there are things that you get, or inside your shoes or whatever, just twiggle your toes. Better still, put a rough carpet. Uh, a choir woven carpet is much better and twiggle your toes on it. So every intentional small muscle activity of the toes or the fingers or the jaws ameliorates, that is, reduces the effect of the digital screen on the brain. That was my research point. I'll repeat it. More you intentionally use the small muscles of your fingers or your toes or your jaws. I mean, you may try even to whistle, you know. Now, these are all bad social habits. But then being on the screen is the worst possible social habit. You know, you are lost to yourself, you are lost to the rest of the world on it. So to, anyway, you got the point using small muscles vigorously reduces the neurochemical and neuronal effect of the screen. It really helps. So when your child has to be on the iPad or tab for school reasons, you can reduce the effect on the screen by what I said. You can chew on cucumber, calorie neutral things, you understand? So these things we have to innovate. This is what our empathic learning center does. Uh, because so many children come to us completely digitalized. Completely digitalized. Seven-year-old children, eight-year-old children fighting with parents. They are all uh, screaming off their heads. There's another reason. I'll get to that systematically, but I'll put the points as they come on the 25-minute thing. When a child, well, before the age of six, children learn by rote and by memory. So you give the child a digital screen and songs out of the digital screen, imagining e-learning makes brain brilliant, which is a myth. It's a myth as bad as coconut oil is bad. What's the relevance? Every 10 years, medical world, the pharmaceutical world and the market has to develop a myth in order to earn money. So coconut oil was bad, isn't it? Terrible, wasn't it? Now, it's straight from heaven, which clearly makes Sri Lanka the most heavenly country because we export so much of coconut. Can you see how the market goes? So you, 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 have to, you have to understand, we have intentionally and unintentionally become guinea pigs of the market. Digital screen made the child the target of the market, which is the immorality. We choose to eat and drink what we want, adults. But the screen is thrust upon the child by the parents. That child has no human rights, no understanding to defend its brain, defend its curricular potential. Parent makes the child a prisoner of the screen.
Too hard to say. Too hard to say. Actually, in Sri Lanka, in my language, I say it far more forcefully. Yeah. Uh, so think about it. So all I'm saying is, uh, by the time the child has become five, on the screen, now he has learned many things by rote, by memory. That is possible only up to the age of six. After six, child has to balance and use words in sentences by the language tracks the child has developed. But language tracks don't develop when the child is on the screen. So the recommended advice unapologetically by the American Pediatric Association is before the age of two and a half years, don't give the screen. That is medical advice. Before the age of two and a half years, don't give the screen. There's another bit of medical advice you may not have heard. No mother should be taking any amount of alcohol when pregnant. Anybody has heard this medical advice? This pediatrician's knew for over 15 years. But the Royal College of Obstetricians couldn't say it for PC reasons. What's PC? Politically correct reasons. Now, two years ago, the British Pediatric Academy managed to convince the Royal College of Obstetricians, and they worded it like this. No amount of alcohol by the pregnant mother can be said to be safe for the fetus. You understand it's a, it gets the meaning, what should they have said? Pregnant mother, please don't drink. But in a Western society, you can't say bad things like that, can you? But you can do bad things like that, isn't it? Drink while you're pregnant. So, but the force of the statement is the same. So two things I said, if you take alcohol, any amount, while you're pregnant, you're going to cook your child's brain. And if you give the child the screen before the age of two and a half years, you're going to scramble the child's language. Positively speaking, any child can pick up two languages before the age of two and a half years by listening to parents and siblings. Language is picked up by natural voice. All the phonemes and the grammar of a language a child would speak, pick up without you telling the child, this is English, this is Singular, Tamil or whatever the language. Child can pick up two languages before the age of three by God design. That's how it is. And every new song you learn, attempt to sing even in a very bad tune, but you attempt to sing it, provided the lyrics hug the music and the music notes hug the lyrics, it works like a language. Understood? Every effort at learning a new song, where the lyrics and the, and the musical notations keep the meter and the rhythm, it's a language. So every time you learn it new and you try it yourself, if you can play a musical instrument, of course, it's far better. That works like a new language, renewing neuroplasticity of your brain. Okay? But back to the screen. Uh, what the effect of the digital stimulant effect is determined by the pixel strength of the screen. So uh, all screens are named PPIs, pixels per inch. About 78 years ago, may I have some water? About 78 years ago, we passed the retinal limit, isn't it? The smartphone was called, oh, we have it, thank you, thank you. Lord. Smartphone was called retinal because the retinal limit is the concentration of rods and cones in the brain is 247 per inch. You remember rods and cones? So that was passed by the smartphone. Now smartphones are 600 ppi, which is three times fast than what the retina can take in. Are you following? That is the problem. So when you're on a digital screen, thank you, which, which is three times the PPI of the retina, retina doesn't have pixels, retina has cones and rods. Three times that, the retina is doing three times more than what it is supposed to do. In the electrical impulses, it pulsates into that part of the brain. That is the problem of the uh, mismanaged digital screen. 
rate of pixel change in a cartoon, intensity and variability of sounds and color. So all cartoons have unpredictable sound, unpredictable color combinations. Natural color variations are very gradual, blue, green, brown, very slow. But in the digital screen, color changes, sound changes are violent. Time of exposure is, uh, is much more after 6 p.m. After 6 p.m., the brain secretes melatonin. Brain has a little gland called pineal gland. You are, put, uh, you are familiar with the pituitary gland, isn't it? There's a small gland called the pineal gland, which secretes melatonin. Melatonin is what stimulates God's dream weaver program in the brain from 6 p.m. onwards. Brain gets ready for memory packaging, memory storing, and getting ready for next day. So every bit of the screen after 6, 6 p.m., young or old, you are ruining your memory and you are ruining your natural sleep. So now you have night screen vision, phones are there, LED screens are there. There are goggles like that for graphic designers because they now describe a degeneration of the retina of the young, which used to come only when you're older, but now graphic designers who are all the time on a LED screen were described with the degeneration of the retina, uh, which, which now can be prevented because there are goggles that graphic designers can use. Of course, there are night screens also now available. Whatever it is, after 6 p.m., reduce your screen time, get to your laptop and the desktop for absolutely essential work. Give me a wave on it, okay? Yeah, I'm asking for to cast the vote because Sri Lankans are addicted to casting the vote. Uh, that's a Sri Lankan habit. We need a we need an election, rigged or otherwise, every year. Otherwise, democracy dies in Sri Lanka. Yeah. Uh, so, time of exposure is after 6 p.m. is more. So you have to plead with your child, please, darling, no cartoons after 6 p.m. Uh, one way of uh, tidying over is get some slower DVDs, you know, slower DVDs and give them for 30 minutes. Did you understand? On an older screen. Do you get my suggestions? They're just to tide over. I have a slogan. What's the best cartoon for the child? What is your experience? Best cartoon for the child? Any suggestions? I'm sure some of your parents have tried this out. The best cartoon for the child. We have a slogan for our program. The best cartoon for the child is the cartoon that the child does not see. <laughs> so when parents come with me, you know, usually a seven-year-old. Uh, in my clinic, I have three kinds of students coming. I get seven-year-olds coming, one-third. One-third are seven-year-olds because their speech has scrambled and the effect is seen only at seven years. But before six, they are anyway memorizing. They memorize poems, you know. But after six, they have to put words into sentences. Then the school begins to say this child's language is bad. Then the parents realize that the child's language is bad. Initially, parents will argue with the uh, teachers. I don't know how it is in Australia. Uh, the teacher will say on the parent-teacher day, uh, this, ch uh, this child is disturbed and disturbs others because he's jittery, inattentive, hyperactive, and impulsive, and so on. Then, uh, and not study. Then the t parent will say, that is why we send our children to school to study. It's your job. That's why we pay you. Uh, so we do these uh, lectures in school so that it's a bit of a reconciliatory exercise. We tell teachers that you, this is part of your field. You can't ignore this. You must know how to handle the jittery child. Because people take alcohol at home. But when they get cirrhosis, they come to hospital. Then doctors can't say, if you drank, you ruined your liver at home, you be at home, we can't say that, isn't it? It becomes part of a, doctors feel similarly, the jittery child, the inattentive child has now become part of the teacher's field. So we do things to uh, reconcile this problem. Uh, multitasking is a myth. You are going to lose something in your multitasking. Uh, sleep deprivation is a result of too long on the digital screen, especially after 6 p.m. 
So we have a thing preserve screen time for essential study when the school requires you to be on the digital screen for study. You need to Google up Manfred Spitzer, S-P-I-T-Z-E-R. He was a pioneering neuropsychiatrist, still alive, German, Manfred Spitzer, S-P-I-T-Z-E-R. I really should have his name on this slide. Uh, he said long ago, before the age of 12, don't give the child the screen for study. Don't give the child the screen for study before the age of 12. That advice is still valid. But most schools have digitalized. So we have to take precautionary measures. But you know that great school I told you about? <laughs> about a year ago, uh, one of the old boys who's the head of a big uh, digital company in Sri Lanka, a telecom company, offered the school free tabs for every class. Soon after I had done the lecture, uh, then the warden asked me, what do I do? I said, you have heard the lecture. Then the warden asked me, uh, will you tell him? I said, that's not my business. Uh, he uh, opted to not have tabs in the school. So our school has gone non-digitalized. Why school, isn't it? Yes. Next slide. This is a neuron. Every neuron functions at one, it's through receptors. One neuron is connected to the other neuron through receptors. So every neuron has, at the end of the neuron, a receptor which functions through a neurochemical. What you have heard would be adrenaline, no adrenaline, isn't it? In the conceptualizing tracks, the most important neurochemical transmitters are dopamine and serotonin. You might have heard of serotonin as the happy hormone. It is not a hormone, it's a neurochemical transmitter. Uh, next one. This graphic is out of my research, it's an important graphic. Can you all see this or is this obstructing your view? You can see it, huh? Yeah. Now, this is how we think. When we sit down to think through, salience, thinking through to focus, comes through dopamine. Word salience means in English language, you say, get to the salient point, that is salience. So when we sit down to think through, study through, even read a newspaper through, dopamine keeps working to the desired conclusion do it till the end is what dopamine says. So that's focus and salience. Then when dopamine has done that for 45 minutes, serotonin takes over, serotonin tracks increase to give you satiety. Satiety is, speaks like this. Did I get it right? Did I understand that? I should do it again. Uh, maybe I should uh, check that out. I didn't understand that. And then collation and connection goes on. What you studied is related to that part of that section. And you, at the end of 45 minutes, you want, this you will unthinkingly do. If you are reading a book or a newspaper, you will sit back and say, mm, understood that. Mm. And it is always better to put down notes with your own handwriting. All CEOs of all large conglomerates the world over get up in the morning and they write down on a scribble pad, fingers and pencil or paper, what they will do. Because you think better when you write. You think better when you write. This is why every husband should be writing love letters at every <laughs> age. You love better when you write. You think better when you write. And then they put it down to the digital equipment after that. So all planning is better when you write. When you see the seven tracks, you will understand why. The relationship between writing and thinking. It's not rocket science, isn't it? You can even now understand why writing and thinking will do better than looking at the screen and trying to collect and connect. So all steps of the learning procedure suffers because of the screen. End result is, Actual research is not forthcoming. Computers can't do research. 
human brain has to do research until AI comes. When artificial intelligence come, we don't know what it will be. Recently, there was a seminar in London by Professor John Lennox, Dr. White and others. I have the link to it on AI and, and the challenge to the church. Uh, it's, so if you do artificial intelligence part plus John Lennox, John Lennox is professor of mathematics. You, you would have read his apologetics and so on. Excellent. He, he has many, many books. Each, every book you should be reading, John Lennox. But recent seminar was on artificial intelligence. But till artificial intelligence comes, this is the best mode of thought God has for us. When you write, you think better. Okay? So this is how we will think, 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 or do, do, do for 40 minutes. And after that, we will think it out with self-check. So child learns self-check of what he did by this default mode network of thought. When the child is on the screen, dopamine doesn't come down. Dopamine goes up and up and up. What does the screen do to dopamine? Though it will be saying, next thing, next thing, some more, some more. Do you understand the effect of the digital screen now? Child does not self-check, does not think back. It becomes a character issue. Are you following? This is the curve that I often use. As I told you, young fellows come under the age of seven, mainly with speech problems or learning difficulties. Some learning difficulties are not related to screen activity. They were there from birth. But we still do the activities of the Empathic Learning Center because those activities help learning issues. You have a calculia, you can't recognize numbers, a graphia, you can't recognize uh, uh, shapes, uh, different, different things. Uh, they are helped. Speech is helped when they do small muscle activity. Very simply, when they do sculpture and pottery, with actual clay, earth clay, is better than plasticine. Creole is also good. So we get them to create things with their fingers. We instruct parents to get tutors to do sculpture. What's the principle? The flexible tensile activity of fingers on clay helps speech. Where you'll realize this is a kind of language writing. Did you realize this? This is a kind of language writing. That's how it reverses the effect of digitalization and it improves brain tracks. Uh, I will do a separate slide on it, empathic methodologies. Similarly, music, flute, fingers moving on the flute and the mouth moving on the flute and the eye moving together, eye, fingers, mouth together, helps in uh, reversing digitalization, helps in uh, right formation of brain tracks. Same with playing the guitar or the violin. So in our empathic learning center, we have arts and crafts and painting and all that. Also every Friday we have music training simply to get children out of digitalization. So we do it for 90 minutes. So in that 90 minute course, the child gets an awareness, everything is not digital. He, he, he sort of sees another world. His brain gets a detox for 90 minutes. It's not enough, but it's a beginning. Did you understand that? This is how empathic learning therapy goes. Empathic learning therapy is not our innovation. It was recommended and the term was coined by Dr. Daniel Amen. Now he's Jewish. That's why the Amen, the Amen here. Uh, that's how his name is. You can refer him up. Dr. Daniel Amen. Yes, this is that curve. Uh, to get back self-check for children is important, otherwise they'll begin to attempt things that they shouldn't be attempting. That takes us to the next graphic and then a question answer time and a brain oxygenating time. You have done well listening so far. This is a new topic, uh, tough topic, but you're absorbing here. Yeah. Thank you. Let's take a breather. This again a graphic research 
research uh, graphic from my research. Okay, this is, these are the two regulatory pathways available. PFC is prefrontal cortex, that is the thinking part of our brain, conceptualizing part, this is the cortex, so the front, this is the frontal cortex, this is the temporal cortex, this is the occipital cortex from which we see, temporal cortex from which we hear and smell, and the frontal cortex from which we conceptualize. All executive empathic functions begin on the frontal cortex, and the foremost part of it is called the prefrontal cortex. That's easy enough to understand. So every child and every adult must do executive empathic thinking lifelong, isn't it? So it begins in the prefrontal cortex. It'll be executive, empathic, reflective, creative. Not difficult, isn't it? You, you reflect on what you did. Initiation, so even the toddler initiates a toddle in the direction the mother is. So he's toddling. And the best thing for a toddler is to have bare feet, bare fingers, and toddle on a rough surface. More contactile, the better it is for the brain. More, more the fingers touch rough surface with friction, better it is for the brain. And he's toddling along, usually in the direction of mother or in the direction of interest. So we recommend till eight months, keep the fellow in a playpen, but he'll move with intention to the edge of the playpen. Then you can, you can shape the poles of the playpen in a shapely way. Can you, have you seen forks and spoons, plastic, shaped in a shapely way so that the child can get a full grip? Timber is better than plastic because timber has more friction, but then plastic is cheaper. So, I mean, it depends. Uh, but he can grip the poles and he wants to get up. That should be encouraged. And he wants to throw the stuff inside the pen, outside the pen, in the direction of the mother. Just the way his dad did to his mom during courting times, you know, sort of. <laughs> these genes, yeah. And then the idea is mom comes and brings it back to him and then he feels rewarded. Initiation, navigation, then end conclusion, reward is what mom does. So if mom is at home, excellent. If not, you have to have a caregiver who will interact with the child. So we met with the present president of the country and gave him a 10 point action plan, what to do with Montessori's and play schools to proscribe screen from play school. Now, when I give a lecture, often I'm asked, can't you, can't the government proscribe cartoons? You know, that is, that is a foolish question. Governments will not do that. Uh, but what the government can do is legislate that Montessori's play schools should not use screen for children. Because in, back in Sri Lanka, you pay through your nose for a crash. For a Montessori, it's about 7,000 rupees. That's about, for a month, is about 70, $70. And for a crash, another $70. Every month, having paid that, why should you pay to a place that's digitalizing your child? So we said, insist that Montessori's will have playground, tires, swings, grips, ropes. So presently, we will show you our Den and Dare Center, which is 3,600 square feet in our church, fourth floor, where children come, digitalized children come, as well as Montessori's come. It's all grips and ropes. Uh, so that's the way brain becomes brilliant, and that's the way digitalization can be reversed. Uh, so we prayed long that uh, we will have something where the world wants to come to the church. Often we work in the context of church being criticized, church being marginalized, and the church feeling helpless. 
we decided we can't feel helpless, we must feel helpful. So, uh, to our church auditorium, police officers come for training, uh, lots of teachers come, Montessori's book our place and come, and parents in trouble come. Uh, so I told you, one third of the parents are those whose children at the age of seven find speech difficult, or school has said child's attention span is so short, child is jittery, disturbs others, child is disturbed. Often they have gone to a medical practitioner and they have been put on methylphenidate. So now we are making it known and thank God the Ceylon College of General Practitioners have taken my article on their official website as part of necessary continuous professional development training. So this is on their website. Every family practitioner has to go through this. It's their recommendation. So that's a big step. Before you try methylphenidate, tile, try empathic learning therapy. Uh, other one third come up to the age of uh, 14, uh, children uh, fighting parents for more digital stuff, more digital games, you know, their curricular potential has dropped, school is complaining, you know, parents don't know what to do. That group also come. Then after the age of 14, uh, those who come are completely digitalized. They are full time online. They don't sleep. They go to sleep with the laptop on their lap. It's a huge problem. Uh, recently a chap came from our great school, smelling, unkept. I was shocked to see him. He's so much on the screen, he doesn't bother to wash up. Whole night online, and he gets up whatever time, eats whatever, uh, so it, it's, it's a problem. I, I, you know that this problem is much worse in South Korea and China. In Sri Lanka it's not in that proportion, but it is there. Uh, Australia, I don't know what uh, rehabilitation facility you have for this. How many of your general practitioners are into empathic learning therapy, I don't know. Uh, I'm due to give a lecture at my grandchildren's school this Monday. It's a nice Christian school, uh, Bayside Christian College. They're very good on their devotions and when they saw my material, they were very keen to have a lecture on it. So that's a heartening thing that a school decided to take it on board. Uh, so prefrontal cortex and this is how this is how we ought to be thinking this is called top-down regulation you understood the initiation navigation and conclusion reward is the attention cycle with which a child should grow if you put the child on the digital screen this beginning and end stops he's continually on the digital screen other serious thing is that digital screen is 2D. All of a child's development, God has designed to be 3D. Touching cubes, balls, carrots, shapes. Now, child does not know to call it a cylinder or a cube, but the brain knows cube and cylinder be a God-designed brain like that. So children are meant to develop touching 3D, seeing 3D. So the brain track development becomes 3D. That is 2 into the power 3. You put the child on the screen, it's a flat screen, two-dimensional. You reduce the brain track development by 50%. Two into the power two is four. Who will do this to the child? Who does this to the child? The parent. The parent. Yeah. This is the point at which grandparents begin to cry. Yeah. So my best friends are grandparents. Most of my books are bought by grandparents. But in the corporate arranges a lecture, lots of young parents are there. And they understand. Then they want to come and see me. Uh, I must tell you, if the audience was largely 40-year-olds, I will be far more scientific, far more detailed, and less rhetoric. You understand that, isn't it? But most of you don't look like 40. <laughs> So, so I have, I have taken liberties, but uh, with the 40 rules, you have to be more, more technical, yeah, more technical. Okay, that's, other side is, it's important to understand what this is. Can you see this fully or is this obstructing your view? You can see. If the child is on the digital screen, 
This is the trap the child will get into. It's called bottom-up regulation. What is that? The screen is smart, child becomes stupid. <laughs> because all the kinesthesia screen begins. Acoustic screen begins. Visual screen begins. Child has a robotic response to the digital screen. Yes or no? Yes, the child interacts, but who begins the interaction? Screen. Every digital game, who begins the next thing? Screen. Child is only responding. Correct? Then the child gets into bottom-up regulation. Child begins to respond to what's coming from outside. Often he's trying to respond to kinesthesia, acoustic, visual at the same time. This is a potent stimulation of the digital screen. Nothing on earth gives kinesthesia acoustic visual at the same time like the screen. It's a very potent addictive stimulation. That's why the digital screen is addictive. Sad thing is most people begin, be, begin addiction by choice. Nicotine, pornography, gambling, heroin, cocaine by choice. But children are put into addiction by parents. So if the church does not take this as a mission, you're being unfaithful to the rights and, and destinies God has for children. Are you listening? That's why the church should pitch in. This is an area you can help. You can develop an empathic learning center, offer help to parents who are very overworked. Corporate is very tough. For every dollar they earn, they have to work very hard. So children have no choice other than being nannied by the digital screen. But somehow there has to be a community that understands and helps that children don't go this way. Yeah. So top-down regulation is they are responding to what is coming from outside. This is the same pathophysiological basis of post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD. Trauma that happened three years ago, you're playing it up as if it happened yesterday. Every dream is bad. So all digitalized children, that is a child whose digital consumption is more than 25 minutes a day, especially if it's after 6 p.m., will have abnormal sleep. Every 15 minutes of the digital screen disturbs or robs one hour of physiological sleep. They research. So if you read this book of mine, it has all the research references. This is a thick book. It is written secularly for professionals, meaning parents, teachers, and others. This has no Christian reference. This is $10. This is written spiritual for Christian audiences, but the two go together. I normally don't take this for secular audiences. This is full of, this is a pitch to Christian parents to, to understand. So I don't take this for my normal lectures. Uh, this was my first book with a foreword by my, by our warden. If you want to take one book, this is the necessary one reading, but I recommend Take at least two books. Uh, this is mom and dad mistake management to read with your child under the age of eight. This is designed like that. This mom and dad read with your child over the age of 10. So our policy is get parents into talking mode with your children, get them to understand this, uh, this, this is a scientific issue not that parents are outdated, outmoded, you are not uh, uh, Tyrannosaurus out of the Jurassic Park. Millennials think like that, that the whole world is going digital. I may not have time to uh, address all that. I have addressed this at the family level, easy level, applying level, how to convince younger people that more digital screen does not mean brilliance. Okay? Uh, so this is called bottom-up regulation. When the screen or external things are stimulating, yesterday's things are stimulating the child, 
that stimulation goes to a part of the brain called amygdala. Amygdala is subcortical. Intelligent behavior is cortical. Amygdala is reflex behavior. Amygdala remembers the bad things, the painful things. Now question, should we remember painful things? Should we remember bitter things? Okay, here you went to an eating place and you got E. coli diarrhea, terrible abdominal cramps. Should you remember the place? <laughs> Obviously, yes, to avoid the place. But you can also have a projection that every chicken burger will have E. coli. You get the problem with the amygdala. Amygdala, remember, God created the amygdala. It's actually the si shape of the gallbladder, but it's very tiny. It's, a, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, um, it's, it's, it's even smaller than a pea. Very small. It remembers all the bad memories and, are, and, and is connected to the hippocampus and the hypothalamus. Problem is, when the child is on the digital screen, child is always stimulated from the last thing to go to the next thing, last thing to go to the next thing. This is the effect of the digital screen. That's why it is called bottom-up regulation. This is the addictive pathway. This is what all addicts do. Pornography, gambling, heroin, cocaine. They are on a last thing compels them to do the next thing. Did you understand that? So they're very unfortunate because this we are talking about not criminals, we are talking about children. So they will experiment with stress, thrill, survive mode. They are in dyspathy, that's a new English term, the new Colliers has it for this behavior, dyspathy. Impulsive, repetitive, reflexive, reactive. They're always on a comfort of fight mode. So the physiological fight, fright, flight has become continuous with them. I'll repeat it, you know, if, if we start sleeping, our body gets adjusted to avoid the sleep. They live as if they are sleeping all the time. So they are on fight, fright, flight mode all the time. This needs medical attention, but not drug attention. So that's why what we do is call empathic learning therapy, therapy, yes, Empathic, they begin to understand what is best for me. But they are on a dyspathic mode. Everything is bad. I don't want to do it. So when they come from school, they need detox. They throw the bag, they kick the, kick the, kick the door, they'll trouble the sister. You know, it goes like that. So you, have to, you, you can't fight them. I'll get to that part after you finish filling up the form. I have one more important graphic. But you understood top-down regulation where we should be and bottom-up regulation where we shouldn't be. Okay? Then we can fill, some, fill the form. Uh, so you'll have these three documents. This brain graphic is what I showed you. You can use this to convince people, teach them, learn yourself. This is the form you'll fill up and give as part of a research exercise. Name, address. Telephone, email. So some of you may be filling this up for a grandchild. Some may be filling it up for your child. I have no problem with my children's digital behavior. Age of child of concern. 
my child's TV time. TV screen also is an LED screen. So every bit of screen activity adds together for a commuted effect. Smartphone time, what is your concern? How did the school handle? What age was child exposed to cartoons? That determines the severity of the effect. Cartoon time for a day. <coughs> About the food time, before the age of four, the most brain brilliant time is the food time. That's the time that the child's brain absorbs most. Child is touching food. Child is trying to take food to the mouth. Child is smelling food. Child is touching shape. It's a heart bonding time. So I advise young parents, do your best to be present at breakfast and dinner, even if you are a working mom or working dad. Because food time, you must make maximum use. Never give the screen at food time. Never. What you do at food time becomes a lifelong habit. All good habits, prayer, gentle Jesus, meek and mild, teach at food time. Food time is the most brain responsive time. So do the best at food time. Never give the screen at food time. Now this becomes a humongous task if you have already got the child addicted at food time to give the screen. Do your best to get him off, get him off the screen at food time. Uh, digital effect is more on the testosterone brain. So in our research we found, let's say about 30 minutes of the screen on a boy the same digitalizing effect to come for a girl, it takes about one hour. But once the digitalizing effect comes on the girl, she's dopamine depleted for a longer time. So they tend to get into more destructive behaviors like cutting themselves, uh, more, because they find Dopamine is depleted and to get the same thrill effect, they have to do other things. That's when the cutting comes. You, are you familiar with the subject or not? Self-mutilatory behavior comes with dopamine depleted uh, kids who have to now invoke or evoke endorphin systems to get the same sense of comfort. So that's how the pathopharmacology works. Whereas appliances like a, a blue veil and so on suggest suicide. So that's a different thing. You have heard of blue veil? Yeah. Yeah, blue veil is an app which on the 13th step says cut a veil shape on your hand and keep trying more risky things such as climbing to the topmost windowsill of your house and put your legs out and it ends up by suggesting suicide on the 50th step. Uh, seven have committed suicide like that in Colombo. Uh, so, but, but that is m more directed. What others do is when they're dopamine depleted, they, they get into self-mutilation. I have had cases coming like that to me uh, because they, they are invoking another neurochemical system to get the same thrill because they have come to the end of their digital screen thrills. This lecture is not for that kind of handling extreme behavior. That's for the medical field. But this is for you to know the span is quite dangerous. So why start something that sets the child on a destructive course like that? Uh, so food time is very precious time. Please keep it for good brain developing and bonding activity. Uh, I get cases when the mom was so much on the smartphone while breastfeeding, the breast milk stops. So it's a, 
It's a field that involves every facet of life. Obviously, breastfeeding involves bonding with the child. Yeah. Have you f finished uh, filling up the form? I have one more graphic. I don't know how many gigabytes are there in your brain to absorb. Uh, fill up the form as uh, completely as you can. I'm asking about food time, sleep time, what digital games he plays. Now, as you know, digital games have spooky effects, violent effects, sexual effects, uh, demonic effects. I didn't even touch on those things. I've only touched on the simple digitalizing effect of the LED screen, the, the pixel effect. I have a friend in Essen, Germany, he's a pastor. He's also a computer expert, he has two sons. All their screen activity is linked to his computer. So he has negotiated with his sons that that's how the screen will be handled. So I don't know whether Australian parents are that bold or that intelligent, I don't know what the problem is. <laughs> whether you will take up, but he negotiated with his sons, they are now 16 and 14. Uh, he, he's a physics graduate and a computer expert, he's a pastor also. So that's how he negotiated with his sons. These are some, I mean, things I have learned from what has happened in different, different sections. You're writing down a question and you can ask a question also off the floor. Something I didn't clarify properly, you, you felt it was not argued out well. It helps me if you ask me questions. Big <coughs> pun. Correcting that those effects on the child. Yeah. Can we prayerfully reverse it by prayer? Yeah, in our empathic learning center, our staff is trained to pray. Also, they're filled with the Holy Spirit. So our empathic learning center is handled by uh, two girls. One is Chamindani, one is uh, Tilini. They often see dreams and vision. They are completely right brain. Uh, they reformed me. I'm a very exacting kind of person. But you can't be exacting with right brain people. So when they came on staff, you had to be very gentle with them. And they run the whole empathic learning center with the help of others. You understand what I mean by right brain? They are dreamy, good in music, artistic. They will always make mistake with the scripts. And you can't shout at them. You have to be very gentle about it. Someone, someone left brain has to check all what they write. But they're excellent with children, graphics, creative, innovative, cry with the children. So at least 60% of the effect of our empathic learning center is their heart-given, spirit-given dedication. We also have more adults praying with the children. So we have a, a... George, do you think we can get a clip going? Uh, that You have to sort of click on it and do something. Yeah, so when they come, they get referred by schools, fellow doctors, others who have come. I don't ask them whether they know what it is. So I sit in my section in my room. It looks like a clinic. It has a lot of material and so on. My room has a sand, a sand tray for children to play with and a lot of children's stuff. Uh, some children come very hyperactive. A mother to hold a child for five minutes is so difficult. They are born ADHD. We work with them also. Uh, so of the percentage that come to me, about 30% are born ADHD. They are very, you know, you know what ADHD is. Very uh, hyperactive, impulsive. We feel very sad. Sometimes I, even I cry when I see the mother's sorrow. 
So I sit with them and do a proper medical uh, case history relevant to the subject. If they are willing, I myself do the Christian part. But if I feel they'll misunderstand, they're very non-Christian, then I don't do the Christian part. They go to the empathic learning center and they soften up a lot when they see how much is being done for nothing. We don't charge for this. Uh, we don't charge for this because, you know, I have given up practicing medicine for a salary. So I couldn't think we can charge for this when this emerged. Two, three years ago, I, I felt it has to be a ministry, so we don't charge for it. All those who are working are on church staff, so they get paid because they are on church staff. But our initial laying out costs were quite heavy, and maintaining costs are also heavy, but it's worth it, because the world comes to you. They come to you desperate. Some people have gone to three, four psychiatrists. One child was on seven psychiatric drugs. Because once you start methylphenidate, you, uh, your dopamine and serotonin is already off balance. So it is a pharmacological oxymoron to give external drugs. It is simple, straightforward thinking. On a brain which is already chemicalized, what can an external drug do? Absolutely nothing. Secondly, all pharmacological drugs act on neurons. So if you give methylphenidate, after a while, brain neurons downregulate. You have to give a higher dose. Downregulate means receptors close. To get the same effect, you have to give more drug. Then it creates non-specific side effects. Then you give other drugs to stop the side effects. So it's a lunatic theory, really. Speaking medically, it's, it's, a, it's completely wrong. But then, you know, paradigm shifts are very difficult. So to, But you can, since I have started now lecturing on this, you can change it. Uh, this is our den and dare. Thank you, George. This is a Montessori that has hired and come. Uh, so they're just enjoying that. Those are grips and ropes. That is, more you, that's the border, border wall. They climb up. This is an older group. More you grip probes, more the brain becomes brilliant, more you reverse the digitalization. Got the theory? Yeah. Small proprioception, medically speaking. Uh, so it's, it's tough. It's a 90 minute prescription. So when I sit down, I put a doctor's prescription thing and this is the prescription. Uh, swimming, clay molding, they call den and dare. Can you see what they're doing? Yeah. It's a sweaty thing. Now we have a eight inch pad down there. So even if they fall, nothing happens. This is best done barefooted because, you know, gripping with toes, gripping with fingers is the way. Uh, so this uh, voluntary muscle track works on glutamate. That's a neurochemical transmitter. It reverses the dopamine jitteriness. That's the medical theory we conceptualized. Not in an adult is addicted. Same thing. We do it more outdoor. So our campsite also has... Is there another clip, George, that you can... Uh, you might come across the campsite one. We have a 10-acre campus also, which we use for our church. Con uh, this is a kid's bakery. Uh, so, you know, we get children to actually make this stuff during our once a month thing. Uh, so this gets them out of girls make the food and boys eat the food. That's how it goes, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, so the uh, whole idea is, you know, get their fingers moving. It's another kind of activity. We call it kids' bakery. Arts and crafts. I have, been, I have also lectured to all the AMI teachers, Montessori teachers in Colombo. Yeah. So this is a kid's bakery uh, in action. This bakery happens only once a month, but the arts, crafts, then and there happens every week. Uh, 
in Sri Lanka, doing things that sound medical without license is not a problem. Anyway, I am a licensed medical practitioner. Uh, uh, but we call it empathic learning training. So it's like a training center. This is our outdoor place. Uh, so we have boating. We get them to make barrel boats on site. We have barrels and life belts and so on. Because we have a waterway. Uh, this is the outdoor thing that we do with adult. This is all on our, uh, can you see that? That's called earthquake. So these chaps who have lived on the screen get to understand what thrills are. So here's one more reason to come to Sri Lanka. <laughs> yeah. This is on site. Of course, these are not all digitalized people. Our normal church camps, we ask, uh, we, we have normal children. I mean, digitalization is not a disease. It's just that they get off so many other possible thrills and get on to one thing. That's about it, isn't it, uh, George? Yeah. That gives you a picture of what happens. But of course, this outdoor thing goes on for three days. Indoor things, 90 minutes at a time. This is part of my lecture when I do it. I do a little about parenting, uh, the dad years, mom years, and so on. Uh, so police people respond to this a lot. That's how a child goes. First year is intimacy. So children who are not close to the mom, they, 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 they don't understand intimacy. Uh, children who are not close to dad, they don't, they don't have confidence. Mom makes it daily safe. Dad gives the stretch and next step. And stretch and next step should happen daily in little things. Read a story, mountaineering story. So I always say between 8 and 10, bedtime belongs to your child. I mean, Croatia might be winning the World Cup, but bedtime be belongs to the child and not on the screen. Yeah, this, this is, uh, in my long lectures, I do all this. Uh, I was not hoping to do this part, really. Yes, uh, questions? More intelligent the audience is, more the questions. These Air Force officers who came for a training, Uh, actually, it's uh, the cartoons and digital games have really got hold of. Now, see, Y Gen, the world adapted to Y Gen. Y Gen was the first generation who had an equal diet of the digital screen and the books. Uh, so, Y Gen was the first generation that got their. Uh, I, I need to show this before. Uh, I'll show the last graphic, George, then, then the questions can be better answered from a better understanding. Uh, I think you have to go... Uh, there's a graphic with seven tracks. This is a long lecture. Actually, it's at least a half a day thing. Yeah. Uh, George, there's a brain with seven tracks maybe earlier, soon after the double curve. That's the one. Now, uh, understanding this, you can, everybody can see this. These are functional brain tracks. This was pioneered by Dr. Hubbard Gardner, this thinking. It's very useful. So the first track is empathic intuitive. How do I feel about myself? Second track, empathic relational. How do I feel about others? So some children are inward thinkers, they're quiet. They want to think things through inside. No teacher or parent should say, now stand up and talk, why are you not coming out? Your relatives have come, bad manners. They're like that. You must not speak to children like that. They're quiet. 
inward thinking children. Now you will understand that you had a child like that. Don't shout at them. They are quiet inward thinkers. And often they look as if they are late bloomers. You know, they, they, they show up late. They can become quite brilliant. Uh, empathic relational pe people who are strong in this, they are going out, outgoing and talking and, you know, they love to talk. Uh, then the next track is linguistic. I told you already, before the age of uh, two and a half years, never give the screen. Never give the screen. You will scramble that child's speech. Before the age of three, a child can pick up phonemes and grammar structure of two languages without you telling the child what the language is. Child will speak English properly and the vernacular properly. You can't teach three languages, only two. Okay? Don't try to teach three languages, only two. Uh, so that's the linguistic track. Again, there are children who are very verbose and they get their answers while they are talking. You must not tell such a child, shut up and listen. They can't shut up and listen. They listen while talking. Then there are other children who are very quiet. Now, you, a teacher can't tell them, get up and say this. They, they can't get up and say this. But they are quiet. They are quietly learning. They are not verbose, isn't it? Some children are very economical with words. Some people have a verbal diarrhea. And if most of them end up in parliament, we do have a problem. <laughs> then there's a logical learning managing track. Children must be put to this while they are toddlers. That's why we give them cubes, building blocks. Uh, Lego is okay, better than the screen, but Lego also can be addictive because it has only one directional movement. Erector or mechanoset where you use the screwdriver like this and spanner like this, that makes brain brilliant. But an adult has to do this with the child. Uh, can you understand, can you see when you give the screen and not these things, how much a child loses, isn't it? Yeah. So in our empathic learning center, we do all this. So parents see it and then parents take a decision, must go home and do better and we give them packs to take home and do. So the empathic learning center is not only for the child, Parent also has a change of heart. So I take, take a lot of time to speak to the two parents. Each consultation takes about 30 minutes, but then I get a chance to tell the gospel also. So what have we given our lives for? It's worth it. We don't have to go on the street, they come to us. So it's a great door. Uh, now, as it is now, uh, June, July 5th it, uh, in Gaul, the, uh, the National Girls' School is a uh, Sacred Heart Convent. They gathered about 400 uh, parents. I did my first lecture with them. Second one was convened by the GA, that is the head of the district in government machinery. He gathered all his senior staff, including doctors, about 150 to 200. Then I'm able to tell them the scientific part. Then I'll tell what I tell them for the spiritual part, I'll do after I finish this. Uh, so this is the logical managerial track. This is, these are the tracks with which we do work. Will you say with me, do work? Then we have the kinesthetic acoustic visual, we all have. And before the digital screen came, 30% were designed to be kinesthetic acoustic visual creative, musical, artistic, dreamy. They were called right brain. <coughs> Correct? When the digital screen came, this percentage has disproportionately goes, gone up. That's the problem. So Y-Gen was the generation that got a lot of kinesthetic acoustic visual. So the universities had to develop Curricula such as hospitality, fashion decor, you remember? Those curricula were not there a generation ago, but the world was ready to adapt. They could adapt and they provided graduate courses in those fields. So the digital effect on Y-Gen was accommodated into the work field. Give me a wave if you understood this. After that, when the digital consumption increased, 
you got the I gen, the Z generation. Now they think the, there's only the screen. Then if you ask them, they, what do you hope to do? They'll say, I want to become a games engineer. They can only live on the screen and off the screen. Then the world got to a situation that you had to create the world, recreate it in the image of the ash screen. That's not a real world. That's virtual reality, in fact, unreality. So with Vigen, this is a little sociological thinking, huh? With Vigen, they were accommodated. With Igen, you will have to have more and more games and 24 hour online. And more addiction. That's the problem. Yeah. Uh, so that's how it has happened. So that is how the generations uh, began to work it out. So we have to somehow get Igen more involved in empathic, reflective, creative, hands-on living. And that has to become the mission of the church also. Okay? So my last bit of my talk, I, I bring them to this point. Then by this time, you know, whether they are police officers, doctors, corporates, banks, all of the parents are now in a, what do we do? What do we do? They are worried. So at that point I say, uh, last section I had to do is mistake management. There is a generation that will uh, experiment with thrill. They don't consider limits. If you say don't do, they will want to do. So I tell them once upon a time, our parents said, if you do it next time, you will see. <laughs> then I tell them, if you tell that to this generation, this generation will think, my dad said, he, he, he will show. My dad has a show better than Ben 10. So immediately they will do the thing dad said don't do, just to see what dad will do. <laughs> so I tell them, they'll provoke you, and some children will say, so you want to hit me, no? Hit, hit. <laughs> they'll do that. I'm not exaggerating, they'll do that. So you can't get into fisticuffs with this generation. Uh, you can't get into arguments and commandments with this generation. You have to mentor them. Once upon a time, our parents were commanders. They said it, we did it. <laughs> then, you ha there, were co there was coaching. So you coach the child. Then there were mentors. You run with the child. You, you do with it with the child. Now you have to become a painter and a poet and you had to go along drawing life with them on their life canvas, suggesting what paintbrushes, what stroke, what colors best makes life. Big change. Big change. And grandparents can help by just loving. Grandparents, no commandments, that's not your business. <laughs> Serious, yeah. You'll make the matters worse. Just love, okay? Yeah. You can contribute, empathy, bonding, just love. Make it easy for the 40-year-old generation, you know, to get a salary hike of 10%. They have to sacrifice 30% of their existing time. That's how it goes. Corporate is very tough. Pharaoh is really Pharaoh. Our only hope is second exodus is coming. <laughs> And uh, just before I came to Melbourne, uh, the Lord Jesus said he's coming next year. <laughs> so my uh, children and grandchildren stay in Melbourne will be pretty short. No, no, I'm joking. Huh? Don't, don't go and say that uh, Dr. Clarkman said Jesus Christ is coming next year. Uh, so grandparents do have a role, but you don't start commanding them. So my, I finally tell them, it's a very Sri Lankan parable. Uh, you have two oil lamps. One lamp is charred and burnt, and the wick, there's very little, no oil. Other lamp is new, wick is new, you're in a dark room, there's only very little coconut oil in the bottle, and there's only one match in the box. You want to lamp a lamp, 
to get some light. Which lamp will you light? Understood the parable? What do you say? Now I'm asking this from 400 senior police officers who have come to a training program. At the height of the effect, I asked this. I have gone through the mistake management. Yeah. What lamp do you think? Charred old one or the new one with a new wick? What do you say? Who says the new one? Who says the old one? Do you know in my parable, in my conferences, 90% say the old one. I say, why? Then I tell them, you know why? When your child goes charred, you can't reject and have a new child. Then I tell them, when your marriage goes charred, no new marriages. Marriage is for life. Then I tell them, abortion is murder. So then I go the whole hog through. Then I say, when a child errs, don't command him, you'll have to sit with him in the hot seat. No child can be prescribed a hot seat more than 30%, because for the pleasantest thing, his attention span is 40 minutes. For the unpleasant thing, the attention span would be much less than that. And dad, sit with him. Then I say, this is what Jesus did on the cross. He took our bad things on himself. So I can say this in the HNB, I can say this maybe in the Ceylon Bank. I can't say this in Sampat Bank. It's a very, you know, these are Sri Lankan banks. Last one is a very Buddhist bank. I can say this in all Christian schools. Always in lectures that are in our place, it's our place, we can say that much. But remember, this is not a gospel preaching. This is a professional lecture on digital science. So then, of course, they come to ask you, then books are bought. Uh, many of my books have Christian content in a way that a secular audience will not get offended. That's the way it is. Thank you, Lucky, for organizing this. Thank you. Please take a book home. Two thicker books, the smaller ones are five dollars. Buy one to give a friend. If you'd like to be kept informed of uh, Dr. Lalit's uh, Please return articles. the documents document they can return, what they feel. Yeah, the document can be given back, you can leave it on the desk. And if you'd like to be placed on his uh, mailing list, there is a sheet there, stay in touch with Dr. Lalit Mendes, and uh, then he, you can have access to his emails and he has a blog. And